Hello, everyone, and welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today. Our session today is with Dr. Ravi Gupta, a leading cardiologist. Uh, Dr. Gupta has around 32 years as a medical practitioner. He's been practicing invasive and non-invasive cardiology and is attached to the Wokhart Hospital in South Central Mumbai. He's a fellow of the American College of Cardiology as well as the fellow of the Society of Cardiovascular Angiography and Interventions. He has done more than 6,000 coronary angioplasties, including complex cases as left main bifurcation lesions and chronic total occlusions. Dr. Gupta is also a naturally acclaimed artist and has written a book on medical humor called Mad Scene in 2005. Dr. Gupta, how are you? I am absolutely fine, Mr. Maheshwari. How are you doing? I'm good. So, Dr. Gupta, you are you are right now at at uh, one of Mumbai's leading hospitals, uh, emerging leading hospitals, I would say, Bokart in in uh, in central Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, so, what's the scene uh, you you get about the COVID situation? Is it is the fear there? What is your advice to everybody uh, who's here? We have a fair number of senior citizens here. I would say that at Vocard, uh, we face a lot of COVID and uh, uh, actually our ICU team, uh, almost all our doctors had faced one or the other problem because they were actually working very, very hard. And we at Vocard treated a lot of uh, COVID patients. Fortunately, the COVID cases are decreasing very significantly now, which we were also, I mean, I was also on a national television just uh, 15 days back. So we were discussing about the third wave, but the way we are moving ahead, probably we would be escaped from the third wave. That yeah. is one thing. You know, that is that is a huge statement that you have made, doctor, because... Yeah, yeah, I am I'm very hopeful and and what I believe that we need to understand that people are now aware. Initially, we thought that we have to tell each and everybody about how to wear a mask, what is the value of social distancing and all other things. But believe me, over the time of one year, uh, whatever media, whatever uh, the government agencies and we among, uh, I mean, we also try to convey this thing one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to the public that these three things are very important. And one thing is also important that uh, somebody is very happy. Mr. Devendra Gada has written that wow, we won't get uh, the third wave. <laughs> Mr. Gada, I am also very hopeful. I am not, I mean, if I, this is in my hand that I would pray God that, yeah, we had enough. Please stop Corona now. Uh, you know, you have done uh, so much uh, work over the last uh, 30 plus years in the field of medicine. Uh, you know, Seniors Today, as you know, is a platform for senior citizens. And most of the people who have gathered here, whether it's, whether it's on the Zoom or on our Facebook uh, live page, are uh, most of them are senior citizens. Um, so a, a, a word about for them about uh, uh, cardiac care that you would like to say, and then we, we'll just go direct to the questions. I would say namaste to all the senior uh, people joining here. And uh, I always feel, I mean, uh, I am from Jaipur. My parents are in Jaipur. So I always consider those of that age group like my parents only. And uh, I humbly share that I was fortunate enough to treat both of my parents. Actually, I did angioplasty of my mother last year. And I did angioplasty of my father almost five years back. So I was very fortunate and whenever I see any person, any patient of that age group, so I always have that feeling that as if I am treating my parents. So that's, this is a feeling I have for them and uh, a, a big regard to all the senior people joining us. And I wish uh, and pray God that you all remain healthy forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if, with your permission, shall we get to the questions directly? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so we have a question from uh, Mr. Ashok Grover, mm -hmm. and um, who asks, uh, my heartbeat usually is between 51 and 63. Mm -hmm. Is it a, okay or a cause of worry? Uh, Mr. Grover, uh, the question is very valid because normally we say that the normal heartbeat is 60 to 100. 
but whenever we are dealing a situation something like 51 to 60 as you said this is not normal but if the patient has no symptoms then i won't say it is abnormal also there are two three things which we need to understand about heart rate if patient has symptoms and what are the symptoms if the patient has slow heart rate that we call abnormal heart rate there is one heart rate which is slow but when we take the ecg we call it sinus bradycardia it means the rhythm system i mean starting from the right uh, uh, right chamber then traversing the iv node then reaching into the lower chambers this all path is normal but overall heart rate is slow patient has no symptoms then nothing is required if the patient has abnormally slow heart rate with symptoms symptoms are usually giddiness or syncope so these are two things third thing at times we see a lot of people who have done a lot of physical activity in their uh, young uh, age in those people also the heart rate becomes slow if for example if you talk about carlois who was a 100 meter runner he has a heart rate of 38 but he was absolutely fit so it's a simple uh, formula if we talk about talking about the cardiac output it means the heart is supposed to pump blood to rest of the body it is supposed to give almost 6 liters of blood in every minute so how we can deliver either it pumps more and uh, ejects less amount of blood or it ejects more blood with lesser beats so those who are trained athletes they are able to deliver or control their cardiac output even with the slower heart rate so if you have no problem you just get one ecg done if your ecg is normal then nothing is to be done thank you uh, we have a question from us pujari mm -hmm. who asks uh, my wife got her an angioplasty done in june mm -hmm. her efr was 30 percent mm -hmm. she's taking medicine Will the efr was 35 percent the EFR was 30 percent. EF, EF or GFR? Well, maybe GFR. I, I think I think he's GFR. talking about EF ejection fraction. Yeah. E well, I, okay. I think that's what. No, it no, is. I, I understood. Most probably, this is ejection fraction. EF he wants to convey. Okay. Uh, he is taking uh, medicine. Whether he wants to know whether the pumping rate will increase. Yeah, that is also a good question. Actually, we really don't know. Uh, how the heart pumping will take normal course and how long it will take. What happens in which situation we did angioplasty, that becomes important. I mean, if a patient came with a heart attack, we know that this artery is occluded just recently and we are opening as early as possible, then there are more chances that the heart pumping improves significantly in near future. If somebody has a lower heart rate, uh, I mean lower uh, ejection fraction for long, and uh, these blockages are probably also long. In those situations, ejection fraction may take time to improve. And uh, what would be the degree of improvement that we can't predict? So this depends on person to person. When she had angioplasty, whether she had a heart attack or it was just like angina. Right. So obviously the you know, expert attention is, is important. We have a question from uh, Raghavendra Odiar. says, mm -hmm. Doctor, can you tell us about missing beat? I understand it's a benign condition. Miss beat, I won't say that it's absolutely benign condition. Uh, it can create a lot of problem also if it is con con coming continuously. Because missing beat means when, as, I, as we were discussing, if uh, I will just uh, put this, uh, my camera slightly down, so pro probably you people can see my chest. So there are four chambers in the heart and two chambers on the right side, two chambers on the left side. And as, our, as we have electrical system in our, body, uh, in our houses, we have electrical system in our heart also. So whenever a normal heartbeat means the electricity starts from the powerhouse of the uh, of the heart it will give impulse this impulse goes to the lower chambers through a gateway that is known as av junction so this gateway can actually stop it can reduce 
it can actually increase the heart rate which was generated in the powerhouse so what happens some people they develop one beat which comes prematurely so we call it premature complex or missed beat so this missed beat means this beat will not be perceived why it is called missed beat because it is the heart has beaten but that beat was not strong enough to give this impulse up to the wrist that's why we call it missed beat so this missed beat may be a reflection of some electrolyte imbalance like if somebody has some abnormality in the sodium or potassium they can have missed beat if somebody has some blockages again it may be an manifestation of ischemia so i won't say that it's a benign condition and it becomes a life threatening situation if these missed beats comes continuously i mean if somebody is having vpcs regularly for more than 3 or 3 beats or more then we'll call it ventricular tachycardia so this can be a life threatening situation so whosoever missed beat at least a basic investigation like serum electrolyte should be done a 2d echo and tmt should be done thank you we have a question from an anonymous attendee mm -hmm. who says after experiencing corona in late march the mm -hmm. pulse rate is consistently high while standing and walking ecg mm -hmm. 2d show no anomaly will this be normal or should or should and 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 not of concern or should this be of concern actually high heart rate may be because of two reason one is anxiety per se because this corona has affected everybody i am believe me everybody and it has given anxiety to all of us because we all no nobody was aware of corona that how it be is what are the organs involved with corona and all those things so one thing is anxiety which probably over the time will go on another thing the effect on the autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system is one which controls our heart rate and blood pressure so it may be if she can make out her heart rate goes up when she changes her posture i mean if she is coming from lying down to sitting or sitting to standing then heart rate goes up then probably it may be the effect on the autonomic nervous system or it remains as such all the time ecg remains normal then it may be maybe just anxiety so in any case for that she should take one medicine which we give propanolol propanolol will take care of the anxiety part as well as it can take care of the heart rate also right thank you we have a question from uh, dj santa maria who says mm -hmm. i have had an angiography done 10 years back mm -hmm. how often one must, must one undergo it no if you uh, had an angiography 10 years back and uh, i hope it was normal so if it was normal then you and if you have no symptoms then it is not required if you had some blockages then probably and you develop some symptoms over the time then you may require another angiography if the angiogram 10 years back was normal and if you have no de uh, haven't developed any new symptom then i won't recommend angiography for you thank you we have a question from uh, mr navin chandra shetty so mm -hmm. dr i am an addison's disease patient and i am on steroids mm -hmm. any special care needs to be taken by me for heart health sir overall uh, i mean uh, i know those who are uh, addison patient they have to take a steroid for life long because the body is not generating enough steroid which are required for human beings but what happens that steroids per se have lot of problems although steroid helps us also in few conditions but most of the time it creates more problems also so in your case i would say that you have to take steroid throughout so just be in uh, coordination with your uh, endocrinologist or whosoever is looking after you so he can guide you that whatever minimum dose of uh, steroid is required that you can take this is only thing i can tell you because it, uh, steroid per se can develop a lot of things including increasing blood sugar level and and so on so take minimum dose which is required right thank you we have a question from uh, narendra shah it's a very general question but how do you increase good cholesterol 
<laughs> Actually, this is also a very common question, and there are several ways to increase good cholesterol, including alcohol. So this may be the reason why he is asking me to answer this. <laughs> jokes apart, jokes apart. Uh, increasing good cholesterol is best thing is regular walk or exercise. People would recommend different different type of exercises. I would recommend only one exercise, brisk walk. I mean, I have a simple rule of four. If you are able to cover four kilometers in 40 minutes, and if you are walking four days in a week, that is good enough. You need not to do any other exercise. It will take care of so many things, including your cholesterol, your blood pressure, diabetes, and so many things. If you are not exercising, then your cholesterol may not be controlled. There are several drugs which were specifically tried for cholesterol, including niacin and uh, other things I would still say that atorvastatin is the best drug is still for increasing HDL. And third thing is moderate alcohol consumption. Moderate alcohol consumption means you take two drinks in one go. One drink means 30 ml, not big patiala pack. And you are allowed to take it uh, three days in a week. So that is the definition of moderate alcohol consumption because what studies have shown that moderate alcohol consumption is better than uh, teetotalers. Teetotalers means those who have never tasted alcohol. So, but still I would say that heart is not the only organ in our body. There are several organs in our body which are clearly uh, affected adversely by alcohol. So those who are not taking alcohol, I would never recommend alcohol as a treatment. But those who are taking alcohol in higher amount, I won't tell them to stop it altogether. If you can reduce it to moderate alcohol consumption, it will help you to control your cholesterol better also, and it will control your HDL also. Doctor, uh, since you spoke about alcohol, it's it's often said that you know having a glass of wine is perhaps better than uh, uh, anything else. Is there is there any preference that one should have about alcohol, or is it or is any all alcohol the same? No, all alcohol are not same. I mean, if we talk about wine, I would say wine and whiskey. These are probably better one. If we uh, talking about the medical advantage of these uh, drinks are concerned. And if you talk to me about uh, a drink, which probably the worst, that would be a beer. I mean, these are empty calories. And those who are diabetics, those are very calorie conscious, they will unnecessarily increase a lot of calories uh, in beer with a 7% alcohol. I mean, a cough syrup has better alcohol content than uh, a beer. So why not to take cough syrup in larger amount instead of, <laughs> <laughs> instead of taking beer? So I would say, uh, I mean, whiskey and wine are the best among all these uh, liquors. Thank you, doctor. We must call you over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are making your speaker on so your wife also can listen to it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we have a question from uh, an anonymous, anonymous attendee. Mm -hmm. uh, is it worthwhile to have an angiography with infusion drugs rather than with catheter? Sorry? Is it worthwhile to uh, have an angiography with infusion drugs rather than with catheter infusion drugs that's i right. think he i think he wants to uh, ask about whether ct angiography or the conventional angiography or the catheter angiography so i would very gracefully say that ct angiography has gained a lot of uh, uh, popularity among the patients and the laymen which it does not uh, uh, deserve. Uh, I very gracefully share when uh, we had CT angiogram uh, facility in our country. I mean, I'm talking about 20 years back. That time I was working in Delhi with Escort Art Institute. And I was fortunate enough to, enough to do the initial studies on CT angio in India. So all the papers on CT angio are actually in CSI written by me. So I know I know slightly more about CT angio uh, than other people. So I would say that CT angiography is not a substitute of coronary angiography. That has to be very very clear. Second thing, CT angiography 
we cannot decide any treatment on the basis of CT angiography. I mean, if you do CT angiography, it suggests some blockages. Again, for to define the treatment, whether angioplasty is required or we can manage with medicine or a bypass is required, we have to do a coronary angiography, a catheter angiography. So there is no fun of doing CT angiography when the probability of developing CAD is high. If you are doing for an eye wash, I mean, this test has a very good negative predictive value. What does it mean? It means if CT angio says that calcium score is zero, then you can write on a wall that there are no blockages. Got right. it? Yes. Yeah. We have a question from uh, Katie Dadanchi, whose question is, Doctor, we are told that statins taken for reducing electro, uh, cholesterol damage mm -hmm. the liver in the long run. Mm -hmm. Is this true? Should we reduce the statins intake if the cholesterol and the LDL are slightly more than normal? Doctor, no. tell us that sugar is a bigger concern, bigger cause of concern than cholesterol. Your views. Sorry, I could, I could make out the first part. The first part of the question was, First that, part, uh, whether statins uh, taken for reducing cholesterol damage the liver in the longer run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what was the second part? And should we reduce the statins intake if the cholesterol and LDL are slightly more than normal? Yeah. Uh, both questions are actually good. So I would say that cholesterol control is important. Statins are very, very useful drugs because people do a lot of dieting and lot of dietary restrictions which are practically not helpful the reason being that total uh, our total cholesterol is primarily affected by our genetics so i mean almost 80 85 percent of the cholesterol is decided by our genes and only 15 to 20 percent will be affected by our diet so you can't do much with your diet number one number two Statins are very, very effective in controlling the cholesterol. And everybody is not having effect on the liver. So they are very, very basic investigations like SGOT and SGPT. Whenever we start a statin, I mean, earlier we used to do a liver function test before introducing the statins. And we used to repeat SGOT, SGPT after three months to make sure that whether this statin is affecting the patient's liver or not. If we have no evidence of this, then there is no fun of uh, assuming that this will affect the liver and we should reduce the dose, number one. And second question, of course, we should titrate the dose of statin if you are able to achieve a goal value. Then your doctor will decide he can actually stop the medicine altogether or decrease the dose according to your cholesterol levels. Thank you. We have a question. Uh from an anonymous attendee again, who says elevated level levels for lipoprotein, would it signify any specific underlying condition and require further investigation? No, actually LPA is another indicator of uh, atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis means developing blockages, whether it is in the heart or in the brain or neck arteries, wherever it is. So, Lipoprotein is other, another indicator, I would say, more than, not more than that. So, uh, in any case, when we are doing all the lifestyle modification, lipoprotein is also being taken care of. Thank you. Doctor, we have a question from Alan Fernandez. Mm -hmm. And uh, says, against the COVID backdrop, is brisk walking while wearing a mask harmful for heart patients? That is actually, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, uh, believe me, I fully agree with people that those who are keep on masking, uh, mask all the time, they feel shortness of breath, including we people. I mean, we, when we leave home, we put on mask and once we reach home, then only we remove the mask. So that is uh, something which we have to take care of. But I think if you are able to uh, walk brisk with uh, your mask on, it means your oxygenation is okay. <laughs> so, so I will answer the question directly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I understand. But basically, I, I think, uh, but, but, but let me ask you this question. If, if one wears a mask, 
Mm-hmm. And if one is feeling uh, shortness of breath, etc., is there a concern and should one report oneself to about this to the doctor? No, I would say that it may be psychological or it may be pathological. So the simple way that when you are feeling shortness of breath, just keep your saturation check. That will tell you whether the oxygenation to your body is reaching sufficiently or not. Another way of doing it, we call it six-minute walk test. So you take a resting saturation and then make the patient walk for six minutes and then again check the saturation. It tells us about the vital capacity of the lungs. So if both are normal, then we will consider that this is all psychological and some people may not feel comfortable wearing masks. So it may be psychological, which may not require any medical attention for that. Great, thank you. We have a question from uh, uh, Nisar Ukaboy, who says, I'm mm-hmm. 78, a chronic asthmatic, have been mm-hmm. on Uracot 200 inhaler on SOS basis. Mm-hmm. Off late, when I go for a brisk, class, brisk mm-hmm. walk, Sorry. Mm-hmm. After a while, I get slight contraction in the heart region, which goes away as I take rest. I'm mm-hmm. also on EcoSpin 75 since two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, when my stress level sh- test showed borderline, mm-hmm. is there anything of concern regarding my heart? This is Nisar Ukaboy, who's 78. Mr. Nisar, uh, in fact, first thing that when your stress test was borderline, then you should have done your further testing, which means and coronary angiography. Because still we don't know whether you have blockages or not. A stress test is a uh, screening test which just guides or gives an idea that this patient may have some heart problems. So once you have your stress test positive, then you should get one coronary angiography done because then only we can decide whether you need to continue co-spin or you can stop it. Or whether your breathing difficulty is related to heart or to your asthma. So you are asthmatic, so your heart rate can actually increase with a Buddha coat also. You can have in- exercise-induced asthma also. And you can have actually aspirin-induced asthma also. So in your c- case, you have to find out the reason behind your uh, breathing difficulty, we need to do at least one angiogram, which will clearly tell us whether we should consider it's related to heart or we consider it because of asthma. If your t- angiography remains normal, then we can stop all the medicines and then you can just take, take care of asthma. Right. Thank you. I hope this doesn't cause an unnecessary fear. Because the word angiography itself causes a bit of fear, right? I know, I know, I know. But but probably we need to give a message that angiography is a test which takes hardly five, seven minutes. Most of the time we are doing it from the radial, from the wrist. The patient remain conscious. Of course, it, it's an indoor test. It cannot be done on outdoor basis. But most of the time, if everything is okay, then we can... Uh, send the patient in two hours time. On the contrary, I mean, please try to understand. We see a lot of patients coming with heart attack. Those people, believe me, 30% of the people, those had heart attack, they die within one hour. They don't even able to reach hospital. So few people, those who had no symptoms in the past, suddenly develop a heart attack. What are the ways to save their life? You tell me. We need to do some investigations. And when Mr. Nisar got his treadmill test, why he got treadmill then? I mean, if he was feared of angiography, then you don't don't do any test. Just forget about this. But if you are curious to know that what is happening in my body, once you get a stress test, that is just a bridge to know that whether I have a heart problem or not. If TMT would have been normal or stress test would have been normal, then nobody would have advised for an eco screen or anything. Probably he did not go for further testing. That's why he's continued to take eco screen. What a doctor can do? I mean, he is also not clear whether he has blockage or not. Are you getting my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we need to we need to balance both the things. Right. Doctor, yeah. we have a question from Balraj Behel. Mm-hmm. Says, would you advise a senior 
who has undergone angioplasty and unable to exercise due to old age and arthritis? Yeah, we, we have several ways to uh, assess their heart capacity in which we would say a simple dobutaminous stress echo in which we do a echo that is a special echo in which we increase the heart rate as if we are increasing in exercise. So we can increase the heart rate with giving a drug known as dobutamine and we do echoes repeatedly. I mean, one at rest, when a low dose of dobutamine dose, one at high dose of dobutamine dose, and the last would be a recovering phase. So this is one test which can give us a good idea about the heart pumping. Another test, our thallium test. So there are multiple ways if the patient is not able to exercise and asymptomatic. If a patient is symptomatic, then definitely we would believe that this is all because of the heart. But if the patient is asymptomatic, then there are several ways. Doctor, we have a question from Sushil Kumar. Mm -hmm. who, uh, asked, can we have a heart ultrasound to check blockages in preference to angiography? Ultrasound means, I think he is talking about the echocardiography. Perhaps, yeah. Yeah. So, in fact, every test has a separate information, a different information. Ultrasound of the heart or echocardiography is giving us the structural information. Structural information means uh, whether the heart is pumping well, whether all chambers are of normal size, are there any thickening of the walls of the artery, the valves of the artery are opening well or closing well nicely, is there any hole in the heart? This all is structural information we can get from echo from echocardiography, but angiography will tell us about the blockages of the heart. So at times the echo remains absolutely normal, but still patient have blockages. I mean, we see almost 50 patients every month, those who have blockages in their heart arteries, but echo remains normal. So echo won't give you a clear picture. If you have symptoms, then we need to do further testing. Right, Dr. Amaro. We have passed, uh, we almost at six o'clock. So I'm going to rush and just ask a few more questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, most welcome, most welcome, uh, most welcome. Uh, Mr. Ramesh and Gupta asked, mm -hmm. is the daily morning walk of five kilometers sufficient for a 61 year old? Yeah, perfect, absolutely fine. Please keep on doing, please keep on doing, absolutely perfect. We have a question from Suresh Ghate. Mm -hmm. is, how does valve calcification develop? Is reversal possible in such a case? What is to be done? Any treatment or therapy uh, possible and how much time can be pulled in? So that is also a good question. Calcification around the valves gives blockages of the valves. At times, the calcification around the mitral valve, it uh, leaks the valve. And we really don't know that in which patient, earlier we used to think that those patients, those who are kidney patients, or old patients or old diabetic hypertensive patients, they have more calcification, but probably there's no direct correlation. Some people, I mean, we see calcium on day-to-day -day basis when the calcium is in the coronary arteries. It means the arteries supplying the heart. It's a real challenge for us to open those arteries with a lot of calcium because for that we need to use a lot of drill and now we have an intra or take, uh, uh, I would say lithotripsy type of thing. So there are several ways, but there is no ways by which we can assess which patient will have calcium and what are the means. I mean, some people started thinking the blood test of calcium, whether it correlates with the coronary calcium or the valve calcium, it also does not correlate. I mean, if the calcium in the blood is normal, it doesn't mean, it, it is not affected by the dietary calcium also. I mean, if somebody says that I eat more or a lot of calcium, uh, yeah, somebody has asking a very nice question, Santa Maria, is calcium the real villain? Yeah, it's a villain for us. I mean, when we have to struggle to open the calcified arteries, we have to do a lot of uh, drilling and uh, used to uh, use uh, expensive devices. And of course, in calcium, uh, opening the arteries also become risky and difficult and it requires a lot of skill. So calcium is a real uh, villain to us, 
but for everybody i would say that calcium is i mean uh, otherwise calcium is required in our body if we talk to an orthopedician he would say that calcium is required without calcium your bones would be weak then you will fall frequently you will have bone fractures frequently so i won't say that for an orthopedician calcium is villain but for a cardiologist calcium is definitely villain thank you we have a person who's asked uh, us to ask this anonymously can psma test be used as a substitute for coronary angiography psa psma psma sorry i i, I could not answer what okay. we'll we'll ask him to uh, to update my knowledge to, yeah in the meantime we have i would i would really appreciate i would really and we have a question okay. from uh, Balraj Behel again. Would you advise yeah. an overweight senior undergone angioplasty and unable to exercise um, due to old age, 85 years old and arthritis? What mm -hmm. would you advise somebody who is overweight, uh, undergone angioplasty and unable to exercise due to old age? The patient doesn't have symptom. I mean, we also respect the age. i want to make this thing very very clear we also respect the age he is 85 if he has no symptoms then we will not run after to check his coronaries i mean if he is no he has also not any concern but if he is very health conscious he wants to know whether my angioplasty is doing well or not in that situation we can do a dobutamine stress echo as i told you earlier this is a simple echo test which is a non invasive test and it can it can give us a reasonable information right thank you i think we'll ask one last question uh most welcome uh this is from raghavendra wadiyar he says i'm 74 uh having essential hypertension and taking bp tablets for the last 24 years mm -hmm. and my bp is normal annually i take tests like ecg 2d echo and lipid profile i'm mm -hmm. on telma am and novastrat 5 mg and mm -hmm. having a normal life Do mm -hmm. I need to take any other tests? What precautions would you advise me? This is Raghavendra Odia, who is seventy-four. No, I respect his age, uh, Rajendra ji. I don't think that you require any test if you are doing well, and you are doing, I mean, reasonably uh, good test uh, on yearly basis. That is good enough. If you are having no symptoms, then uh, don't rush for any other investigation. One last question, Doctor. Uh, uh, well okay we have a person somebody has a message manoj arsha uh, look to my question please <laughs> so please please take his question yeah uh, okay please, please take his question yeah, yeah so this is so for i have uh, or, or you you may request him to uh, yeah, put his question he, again this is uh, uh, he's he's i have what is this question but, but i have received thanks already i mean if even if you don't take his question it's okay <laughs> so this question is uh, 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 what are the main precautions uh, that a cardiac person a senior citizen must uh, take for heart care very good question very good question one i would say that they should take their medicines on regular basis at times few patients they don't develop typical symptoms so they should i mean those who are already known case of heart problem they should be extra cautious even if they have some slightest problem they should take the medical advice one thing is this second is walking that is largely unexplained to them people we keep on telling them that you should do exercise you should walk after angioplasty also but why when not so i always recommend that you should not walk when the weather is chilly in winter season you should not walk i mean in mumbai there is no uh, much chilly weather but uh, i mean i was born and brought up in delhi so i mean there is a lot of weather so we always convey that whenever the weather is very chilly then these heart arteries are also tendency to shrink so those who have underlying blockages the blood supply to the heart can go further mm -hmm. compromise so they should not walk when the weather is chilly and second thing you should not walk immediately after your meals so either you walk before your meals or you walk two hours after your meal so these are the only two things which i would recommend what do you recommend in the in the winter months because the winter months are very long 
in, in, in places like Delhi and, and several parts of North India. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't get your What question. do you recommend uh, that a person should do to exercise in the mm -hmm. winter months, which are for an extended period in places in North India? No, no, I would, I would recommend that you do all your exercises. Only when some people are, I mean, we see that people are getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning and wearing their uh, winter clothes and then they are going. I mean, you just wait for the sun to rise when the weather becomes slightly warm, then you can go and exercise. I mean, I mean, there's no restriction, but don't go when the weather is really chilly. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, for your time. I'm sorry once again that we pulled you out from your operation theater, but uh, uh, you know, but but your responses to the questions were 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 good, extended, and I think very uh, explanatory as the feedback that we have uh, got already from the various people who are there. Thank you once again, Dr. Gupta, for uh, uh, being part of Healthline. Mr. Has the health, sir. Thank you, Ramesh Chanji. Thank you. And uh, all the people, Mr. Radhakrishnan Makran, very informative session, Mr. Pujari, Mr. Sashi Kant Lard, thank you very much for all of us joining us. And may God bless you with great health ahead. And I pray that you don't require me in your life. Uh, doctor, <laughs> one question that we've received, one, one question is that yeah. if you want to uh, do a teleconsult with you, I'm not in Mumbai. If I want to do a teleconsult with you, can we do it? Sir, it usually remains uh, difficult for me, honestly speaking. So uh, why, why I'm telling you, one is my uh, schedule is very unpredictable. I mean, if I'm inside the lab, that probably I won't be able to attend. And second thing, I am, as far as, as a doctor is concerned, I am of old, old era uh, uh, thinking. I want to see patient physically. I mean, this is my uh, school of thought or my understanding that uh, at times we see a lot of patients sending a lot of reports. We don't treat reports. We treat patients. And seeing a patient in person, and if person is, uh, I mean, good enough not to visit a doctor's clinic, then he doesn't require a doctor also. <laughs> this is what uh, my opinion is. So if you are really... Uh, in Corona also, we have been telling people that if you are really sick, then go to the hospital. Otherwise, I mean, if it is not required, don't go out. Corona is decreasing, haven't gone totally. So unnecessarily don't come out. Uh, as far as uh, teleconsultation is concerned, I'm not, I mean, very comfortable because I won't be able to see my patient properly. So probably I won't do justice to the consultation which was made. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor Gupta, for your time, and thank you very uh, much, sir. And, and all the very best to the the patient whom you attended to. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen him yet. <laughs> I just came out of the lab and let me see that how he's doing now. Thank you very much, Doctor Gupta. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, to those of you who are here, we will be back once again next Saturday at uh, the same time, that is 5 p.m., with uh, another session of Health Live at Seniors Today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Maheshwari and all the people who joined us. Thank you. It was a fun and very good interaction with you all. Thank you very much, sir.